Please welcome Erica Jane, everybody. Hi, Erica. Oh my God, look at fabulous outfit. You look down to the queen. I'm like, I was gonna get up, and then the dog, this bitch, took a drone over. Welcome. Thank you for having me, sweetheart. Oh my God, I'm so honored. You have no idea, and I love talking to your fans too. Thank you. Not just in this room, but outside in the world, including my husband, Donnie Wahlberg. Which I appreciate his support. I mean, did it surprise you when you first came on the scene how much support you got? Because there's a lot of haters out there. They come later. But well, they're initially. here now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it did, I, th by the way, I just want to say thank you all for coming in the snow. I really appreciate it because I just, like, it's like sideways snowing. <laughs> like, it's like this? a snow globe outside. It literally it's like insane. So thank you all for showing up. I really appreciate it. Yes, I was truly surprised. Very thankful. And um, it's been great. I've had a great time. Right? I yeah. Mean, what does it feel like to be everybody's spirit animal? Pretty good. Right? Well, yeah, because you know what? Um... I never thought I'd be here, so yeah. it, it's kind of great, yeah. I mean, you never thought you'd be here, but you did, I think, somewhat manifest it. I think we all manifest where we are, and I just dreamed really hard. I think visualization, visual is, visual is it? Hello. Yeah, visualization. Have a lot to do with it. Yes, I it mean, does, right? yes, it does. Yes, and surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals and really staying true to yourself. Now, speaking of like-minded individuals, yeah. one of the reasons why I love that Erica wrote this book is that <laughs> If you guys watch the show, as you know, she is a very, uh, she comes across very strong, uh, very independent and um, empowering. And you don't get to see your vulnerable side that often. No. And I was really grateful for those moments that you did. And, and by watching that, I realized how important it is to be vulnerable in relationships. In relationships, yes. And in the book, I was able to do that. Not necessarily on the show, because it's not really the place for it. Is it? I don't think so. Really? I think... There are I moments, yes, with your true close friends in your family, but oftentimes it's adversarial, Jenny, and you know that. Yeah. So it's, you know, you kind of got to guard yourself a little bit. Because you think it might be used against you. Oh, too. 100%. It will be. I mean, you were so good. That's the game, babe. In, and it, That's the game. It is a game. Correct? It is a game. I mean, and you play it so damn well. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. I mean, without, you know, yes, thank you. Let's back this up now, because in the book, her being vulnerable, she does tell um, a lot of these incredibly hard moments. And I know everyone has their story and everyone has their journey. And, everybody, and a lot of people have had it worse, too. Of course. Yeah. The one, the, the, share, the story that, let's, you know, share your story, though, with your mom. You call Renee. You don't call her mom. Why is that? Because we, I saw her more as a peer sometimes than a mom. And I still do. I still call her. I'm like, hey, Renee, what's up? Uh, she was young. She was full of hope and dreams. And I don't think she got to live those. And I think that uh, our relationship reflects that. Do you remember the age when you started calling her Three. Renee? Three. Three. Well, Three. you felt it then. You're like, I'm a peer. I felt it when I started walking and talking. Yeah, I really did. I was very close with my grandmother, who I still miss to this day. My mom and I are close. We're very good friends. We're very honest with each other. And oftentimes it's not pretty. But um, yes, I, I called her Renee. Now there are times I call her mom. Of course. Of course, 100%. And I, get I love that. my mother. And I was a good kid. I mean, I never got in real trouble or anything like that. But yeah, she was Renee. It was interesting, though. I mean, I call my mom Linda when she doesn't answer me sometimes. I'll be yeah, like, Linda! 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 <laughs> All right. No, but and I then, call her. I'll call her up and be like, Renee, I need to ask you a question. Or Renee, you need to call me. So she's a confidant still, and you trust her. hundred percent. Listen, I, and if I were to pick up the phone right now and I said, Mommy, I need you. See, that's different. Yeah. You know, so yeah, she's still there. Uh, one of the things you talked about, which was hard to hear, was some of the words that your mom said to you and how she phrased things. Yeah, of course. I, but I think that my mother was in a place, she, like, and I've said this, I think she was treating me the way the world was treating her. She was simply reflecting that back out. So and she was young. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you say shit that hurts. Yeah. I mean, one of my. I'm sure I'm guilty of it as well. Well, you we know? all are. I mean, you know, as a mom, I'm sure I've made terrible mistakes, but you know, that's uh, what moms do. We do. We, <laughs> yeah, you know we do. Just, you make we, mistakes, man. We do our best. Yeah. Uh, one of my spiritual gurus, one of my favorite lines is you love yourself, you love what you see, hate yourself, and you hate what you see. This is true. And you project, you know. You project you and you start to see the world the way you see yourself. Yep. I call the. Todd Evan passing the yuckies. I said, when you feel yucky inside, you're gonna, you're gonna try to, yeah. And that's the energy somebody. that's permeating. There was a moment in the book where your mom had made a statement or made you feel like, and I'm, I don't want to put words in your yeah, mouth, yeah. Um, but 
not that you were a mistake or oh yeah i wish i never had you that would be it yeah yeah she uh she was very angry with me we were fighting i believe i was a teenager at the time and she was like you know i wish i never had you and i was like yeah okay well it stuck with me i mean but i don't think that that you know that's okay so do you think don't she- beat up on my mom no are you kidding <laughs> don't beat up on my no it's fine yeah. but um yeah she did say that and i know that she regrets that very much so and we've talked about it and i was uh and i put it in the book I mean, I'm grateful for your honesty, and I don't think anyone's going to beat up your mom. I think every woman here has a. Well, we've all said things that we out of anger or or rage, and you know, but it's too late once it escapes the mouth, and then words mean what they do. It's done, so you know. And then, did you resent her? Did you feel resentment? I think I, yeah, of course, um, for sure, of course, I was hurt, and so I think that there's always that low level of resentment. And then you moved to New York. I moved to New York October 1st, 1989. I had graduated high school. I was uh, I had just turned 18 in July, so I wow. moved here. I mean, you grew up quick. Yeah, yeah, I did. But that's okay because it makes you very resilient. Ap- I mean, on, obviously. But you grew up quick. Our, our, our stories are very quick. similar, I must say. A lot of the belief systems, I grew up like Catholic. And, yeah. Um, I grew up believing the belief system that um, we didn't have enough money. Sure. And, and that there, the money wasn't going to come in. Correct. So you better hold on to it. That's right. Because we don't know. And and constantly the rug is pulled from underneath you. Hey, you better be ready. Right? Mm-hmm. And having stability becomes your number one priority. Being stable, having security, peace, yes. all of that becomes what you strive for. Right? Yes. A steady, a steady place to be. So when I noticed that when she was young, she met uh, her first husband, Tommy. Yes. And... Um, and fell in love and had a baby and I could see my younger self and you going oh my god I would want to capture that because it's stable stability well and we had we really had a connection you know and we and we have a beautiful son together you do yeah he's great and then it didn't work did you during that time period because I want to try to figure it out because I felt so sorry for you I felt don't <laughs> I still don't I'm fine I, I don't don't but do you think you went through post I do yeah. I do my mother and I discussed it um yes I do I think I probably should have been treated yeah that's what I mean yeah I think I was overwhelmed and didn't understand and just like a lot of new moms are and I feel like that was probably something I could have used a hundred percent but I think a lot of young women feel that way and they don't know it exactly. and then now looking back okay so I was 20 now I'm 46 almost 47 and I look back and I'm my younger self and I go yeah you did you needed something but you know it's okay right I mean I think that's something too a message that people can kind of take away from sure is don't be afraid you know if it's not working out find someone that can help you right yeah do you think things would have turned out differently if you got help I don't think um you mean in my marriage in your first marriage and after oh, the baby I'm postpartum? Sure. I think it probably, I should have been in therapy. I should have, but you know, you don't know these things and you're 20 and, right. and you're just trying to put it together, you know, and you're just, you know, out there searching. I want to mention the book again, Pretty Mess, which Thank is you. unbelievable. Thank you. Um, so that time that you said, okay, I'm, I'm really having a tough time. I cut off all my beautiful hair. I cut it off. I shaved my head. Yeah. I mean, yeah, twice I, actually in my life, but yes, after yes, I know the feel I just did this morning. And I want to cry. Um, don't, don't, don't cry. <laughs> it, it grows back. It does it's grow okay. back. Or you can just tape or it you in. can just get new stuff to put on and <laughs> just keep rolling. That's the beautiful part is that it doesn't matter. It's okay. But it's funny as those women, we want to change our identities like quickly. Or I think for me, uh, shearing my head was in a way of like kind of releasing. yeah, releasing and kind of maybe the rebirth. You know, a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the the fact that you had to make the decision of, okay, I'm going to now push forward and I'm going to go to New York. and Leave New York. I'm, go to, I'm just going to leave New York yeah. and go to Los Angeles. Yes. How hard of a decision was that? Oh, it was gut-wrenching and not popular and still isn't to this day. I still get a lot of um, comments about it. You know, you left him. But you know what? Um, I kind of feel like had I not risked that and been able to see the future none of the I wouldn't be talking to you today and so um sometimes we have to step out on faith and take incredible risks that often don't look like they're gonna work but you know we made it happen yeah and you know you said that you know people give you shit for it but isn't it ironic that if the sexes were reversed well I was thank you I was I wasn't gonna say it, but if I was a man this conversation is for so go if I was a man None of this would be talked about. No. But because I was a woman and because of the way I look and because of what I chose to do, because I, you know, to be an artist, it's like bullshit, right? 
and you're being selfish and you're a gold digger and you're a whore and everything else. Instead of saying, hold on, this is what I do. I know this isn't working. I got to change course. Fuck it. I got to go do it. And being brave enough to do that. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's, that's your the truth. truth. That's yes. Yes. I, and I honestly believe in destiny and everybody has their own. Yes, and their they own do. paths. And that was yours. This is mine. So there's no way you can look back and go, God, I wish I would have done it differently. I'm, I mean, no, no. And I'm sure that, you know, uh, did I do it perfectly? No. But I'm okay. And everything turned out okay. You know, I think about guys back in the day that, remember the gold rush? They all left, you yeah, know, they their all left families to go, find, to go find. Yeah, yeah. And then that's... Go was, west, young man. That's right. You go went west, west, young woman. <laughs> and that's what I did. You went west, Erica. I went west, young woman. <laughs> and you went to um, a very infamous restaurant. I moved to Los Angeles when that restaurant was just about to close. What was the name of it? Chasen's. Chasen's. It closed. It was like the, the place where the um, post-Oscar party was held for like a zillion years. This is where, you know... Um, very popular. Ronald Reagan proposed to Nancy. This is like the legendary place. And it closed. And then it reopened at 246 Cannon Drive, <laughs> which is now Mastro's, in case anyone's listening. That's and right. um, They had great chili. They, they did, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and, you know, uh, the rebirth of Chasen's was very brief, and uh, I was a cocktail waitress there. You were, and then that's where you met the that's love That's where I met life. Tom, yeah, my partner, yeah, my husband, was the one who's basically brought me here today. He's so sweet i remember the first time i met you i go oh my god he came on camera and i just wanted to squeeze his little you, face because he has he's special you know he's charismatic like yeah. he's he's magic and i say it in the book he's truly magic he's he understands the trick of life he's very bright and very loving and very tough but you know but that's the way it goes right why so quick with the engagement no 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 we were friends for a year before we went out on one date so I waited on him for a year, and I got to know him. I saw his interaction with the busboy, the right. servers, the other people. Which I love that you got to know all of his circle. Yeah, his kids, um, his law partners, or he had his <laughs> office Christmas party <laughs> there. And now I'm like, hey, I'm married to the boss. You know, remember me? <laughs> yeah. I remember you, um, You're like which, is a lot of, which is so great. You know, it's kind of funny when you when you come from nothing and then all of a sudden you're sitting at the table and you're like, yeah, I remember that shit you did. Right. You know, like you're looking at me a little crazy because, you know, I know. <laughs> you know it's like, you know, I saw you in the parking lot one night. Uh -huh. But yeah, it's really true. And so we uh, we were friends for a year. Then we went out on one date. I gave him my number. I said, hey, did you hear I was single? And he said, no, he was getting a divorce. Uh, he was divorced. And um, he called me, the, his secretary called me the next day and said, Mr. Girardi would like to take you out to dinner tonight. And I said, absolutely not. Uh, he can call me himself and give me enough time to prepare. And that's what happened. Aww. Well, I just didn't feel like that was, you know, you got to play these. Listen, these, you know. I mean, don't I be easy out there. <laughs> play them hard, play them tough. Sometimes, you know, these men, they feel like, you know, oh, yes. At the drop of a hat, I'll just drop everything for you. no. No, do I the see, right thing. I'm the worst. I gave Donnie my phone number. Right. And then um, two weeks went by. And Ooh, I, were you sweating it? I was like, he's gay. He, I mean, How my, dare he not call me? I'm my, Jenny McCarthy. No, no, I know, I know, I know. I know. You know, it's like every little girl ego comes up with excuses. Well, you because start to become, yeah, your honey, heart, yeah, you know? your heart, yeah. And then, I, then once I learned that he thought that I gave my phone number to every guest that came on the show. Oh, and he was, thought you were just being friendly. Yes. I see. And I was like, no, I wanted to get on top of you. <laughs> and stay there. And stay there. Like, I'm I, really happy for you. You guys make a great couple. Thank you. And it's obvious that you're happy. So happy. Yeah, it's obvious. And, and you deserve that. Thank you. You deserve that. So with Tom, you go on your first date. Obviously, you feel connection. Yes. Well, we had gotten all the um, niceties out of the way. Right, exactly. So we could actually sit down and have a meaningful conversation. Because um, it was more like, you know, we knew who each other were. We'd felt each other out for like a year. He was a good tipper, That's too. Cool. You know, he was a good tipper. So, you know. How yeah. long did you wait before you slept with him? Uh, I made him wait a little while. Good. Yeah, a couple of weeks. I mean, That's you know, good. for me, that's a long time. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think two or three weeks is like pretty well, yeah, good. Yeah, and I, I just, I think we were here in New York. He took me on a trip, and it wasn't until then. You and, know, and there's nothing better than dry humping too. So stretch that out as long as you possibly can. Well, I think can. there's something sweet about going slow and really knowing someone. And this was someone that I really genuinely liked. Yeah, I don't blame you. You know, it's some, you know, it's different. Smart, and he was. Smart and successful and interested in me and kind and loving and still is to this day. I'm not, 
I'm here because of him. Right. I mean, me too. Of me course. too. But that's a big part of it. You know, I I had a Evan test when I would date guys. I wouldn't let yes, them come around. Yes, because you have special needs child. Yes, yeah. and so I would wait a long time before As I introduced. you should, yeah. in my opinion. I don't want to confuse him. Plus, no. I want him to rat me out and every single guy that, you know. Guess who was here before you? Oh, my He'd God. Like, what do you do? Oh, my God. He would, he would, he would, and he die. has done that. He has Oh, my done. God, I would die. So, um, you know, he only met two in his lifetime besides his dad. Was it a deal breaker for you at all with Tom? If if you're Tom, I know she's three Toms. Your I have three Tom. Toms. My first husband's named Tom. My husband is named Tom, and my son is named Tom. <laughs> so it's like, which one? Um, would it have been a deal breaker? Yeah. Absolutely. But I knew that they would get along. Uh, one is born June first, and one is born June third. They're Gemini's. They gang up oh, on me. Yeah. The best. The you know. Okay. So before my son was driving, <sighs> we go to dinner. So my son and I would go to the restaurant. Tom would meet us. I would go to the restroom, they would leave me. I would come out and they'd be like, oh, Mr. Girardi and your son left. I was like, uh, what? Like they would leave me, they would gang up, they would play tricks on me, so I was very fortunate. But I bet you loved it. I did. Right? I did, because you know what? And you know, my son carried Tom's briefcase oh. every summer. He worked at the firm, <laughs> you know, right. he went to summer camp, and when summer camp was over, it's only six weeks, um, you know, in Altadena, Tom Sawyer, he went to work at the firm. Which I think is why he's so comfortable in court. He's a police officer right. now. But I think it's why he's so comfortable is because he grew up carrying Tom's briefcase. That's so sweet. And, you know, filing and working. And, and so, yeah. Did, they, did you, um, was there a point where Tom wanted to help out financially and help your son, like? Of course. He's an incredible, you know, giver. provider. Yeah. And for your mom, I'm sure. Well, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit for sure. You know, the great part is, um, yes. He's taking care of everyone. Hmm. Yeah. What about you? Because I know with my family, because I didn't grow up with much, um, the first thing I did with my Play Me of the Year money was go home and write out every bill my mom and dad ever had. That's and very kind of it you. Was, it, was a, it was a gift for, for myself. Sure, to of make course. It feel so to good. support you, yeah. And then um, I put a little down payment on a house in the suburbs, and it felt so great. And um, Good for you. Yeah, thanks. How much was that? Back then? Yeah. $100,000. All right. For, you know, someone How that, old were you? I was 19. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I was 19. <laughs> God, you're brave. But then I was broke, you know. No, but you were so that. brave. A 19 Playmate of the Year. Like, I would not, I wish I could have been Playmate of the Year. You could have, you could still be, oh, yeah. Erica. <laughs> but, well, that would have been fun. I'm not kidding. But that's, that's really cool. You got big balls. Well, that's why when I read your book, I go, there's a lot of similarities. You know, yeah. like when I moved to LA, I was 20, 19 or 20. Um, and then I, my first boyfriend was 50 years old. Yeah. And people were like, oh, you're looking for sugar daddy. And I went, no, 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 no. I make more money than him. Yeah. But I enjoyed the safety net. I felt safe with an older man. I feel, Did you feel that? I still do to this day. I feel safe and I feel like I have, I and mean, it's going to sound so crazy. Don't take this the wrong way. I have a mentor. I have somebody who's really educated. Right. And who's got a lot of experience. Whether I have a legal question, a business question or anything, I'm calling up tom and i'm like hey da, 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 da. is it right that blah 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 and he'll say yes erica <laughs> but think of this you know and yes. in any contract i have you know obviously i go could you just give me two seconds except for the housewives one except for the housewives one which i thought was crazy Bizarre. she said in the book she's like um i, I was going up to the housewives they gave me a full contract and i and called Tom said, just sign yeah and i called and i said t i'm gonna call him t i said t they presented me with this contract to go sign it turn it in I said, I swear, so hand, hand, hand to God. He goes, sign it, turn it in. I said, babe, do you want, do you want me to, like, he goes, no, E, they're doing more for you than you're doing for them at this point. Sign it, turn it in. So I signed it and I turned it in. Then they made me re-sign it because they were like, no, 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 you mean this? Because I literally, in, they're like, in front of lawyer. their face, yeah, did your lawyer look at this? I was like, no, he said turn it back in. So I said, <laughs> okay. But yeah, and I still don't know what it is. You still don't know. No, I don't know. I'm talking to Erica Jane, her new book, Pretty Mess, is available out right now. Um, with, the, with the show, did you watch? Were you a fan of the show? No, I had watched. Um, I knew of the show, but I had not watched the show. Okay, so you didn't yeah. know who the next. No, were. No, I, I knew who the women were, okay. but I did not understand the workings of right. the show. Yeah. And, I mean, the, the girls I talked to say they definitely form alliances almost each season. <sighs> It's like I Survivor, you know, where you're like, Be on it my team. is Survivor. It is Survivor. I prefer to say I like certain people. I'm always going to be allied with myself and do what I feel is correct, even when others may think it's not. But alliances, 
you know, somebody will turn on you and you could be left holding the bag. Right. Especially on that show. I mean, Oof. that's where Oof. it would be difficult for me because I want to be like, okay, I want to really want to trust this person. I'm going to trust you. Okay. I think you have to trust yourself first and then go from there. That's the rule. You would actually be very good. You know, Bethany because asked you're no me bullshit. to be part of New York. And I would, and I'm not. You don't need it, babe. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, you don't need I'm it. Not a it's not for you. I'm not a fighter either, but I can turn into one. Right. I know. I'm not a fighter. I prefer Erica, not to. You can cut a bitch. We but, all know it. Uh, no, but well, <laughs> I. But you know what? I. Ha- <laughs> I dislike that part of my personality because. It takes a lot for me to get there, and once mm-hmm. I'm there, it's just not pretty. Right. I yeah. know. I, I mean, I've been in. I've been in fights. I've lunged at people, and we all have pulled out a weave once or twice in Listen, college. But, but yes. you know, yeah, but that's also human nature. <laughs> you know, it's also human. So. The show, though. What have you learned? Because I know it's a big difference with doing the show and watching the show. Yes, it's we- two completely different worlds. People don't realize that. Like, there's the show you make, and then there's the show you watch, which is um, very different. Very. Very different. And the first time, what did you learn watching yourself? Um, I've learned that I'm really, um, I'm okay. Like, I, I, I'm okay. Like, I, I really, I get it. Like, I, I'm okay. I can survive. I'm good. Like, I don't You're need, like, I like who I am. I like who I am. I don't always like how I react to things, but I'm, I'm okay. Like, I, I'm, I'm fine. And is that- I'm not afraid and I'm not going to cower. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not outmatched. I'm fine. I would definitely want to be on your team all the time, wouldn't you guys? (laughs) I'm like, I'll take her. Yeah, well, you know, uh, thank you. (laughs) It's true. Thank you. So that reaction that you have, that trigger, is that um, a trait you always had? I am ferocious when I feel there's a couple things in my life that are uh, off the table for me. Yeah. And uh, I will be ferocious when I feel like those things are twisted and turned. I don't like that. We've learned that one of them is your child, of course. Oh, yes. I yes, don't very much you. so. Yeah, well, my son is in a dangerous line of work, and they receive uh, a lot of criticism. And uh, he's a very busy young man, which means he's in it. So, uh, yeah, in any day you can get that phone call. And anyone that's whose son, daughter, spouse, sister, brother, who's serving in the military or, or first responder, you know, that's a very tough place to be. And then that pain that we see, that vulnerable part that you go, oh, I don't like when I show that part. Of course. I I like to show it with friends that care. Right. Not with adversaries. And I don't like to be pushed to that point where it's like, you know, like, ah, you know, but yes. And I think that I guess a lot of people portray it differently. Like there's a lot of people where I see it and I go, you need a hug. Yeah. Because behind that is some pain. A lot of pain. But I think we all have that. Yeah. Have you recognized what that is yet? Oh, I think it's just the usual, you know, kid stuff. I think it's just the usual growing up, you know? Do you have any, like, guilt from any past? I don't feel guilty. I feel like I could have done some things better, but I don't I don't lie in bed at night and beat myself up over something I've done. You good. know, does that make sense? Yes, like I, absolutely. I have a perfectly good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> for everything that I might, for every mistake that I've made, you know, and I'm willing to accept it like I do in my book. That's great. Yeah. The book, I'm going, I'm going to plug it again. Do pretty, it. Pretty mess. <laughs> I know I've laid awake plenty of times. I think us all moms do and say, what could I have done better? And- oh my God. I think that, but the, yes, but we do that as humans. And of course, I mean, I make mistakes. I'm human. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had Evan call me numerous times and say, um, cause I live in Chicago and work here. So I got the phone calls constantly go, um, can I trade in my stuffed animals and just have you here? That's, oh, that's and, and it's heartbreaking. Uh, you understand? I uh, yes, right I do. Now. Yes, I do understand. And baby. that's why I'm like, you can understand yes, it. Yes, I do. And I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. But mommy's also working and making a life for you know. So it's. I was gonna say, can you give me some advice? Everything will be just fine, it, and he will come out knowing that his mom's a provider and strong, and she did whatever she had to to provide for him. And that you can't, you know, that's wonderful. You should be proud of yourself, Jenny. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> in the book, you uh, talk about... Remember, fall- but if we were dudes, yeah. we wouldn't even be having no, this conversation. No, exactly. We'd so be out in okay. the Wild West. You know what? Our- no, we would be celebrated for going out and providing. Right. But, you know... And we both had that belief is- issue, which was our belief system of that uh, money can be pulled away at any at moment. At any second. So you have to work, work, work. Right. Yeah. Work, work, work. Yeah, that's work, why work, work ethics work. are very, very hard. Yes. Um, the book you talk about falling into a wealthy coma. Yeah. 
which I thought was really great way of describing it. Can yeah. you talk about it? Yes, because um, when I married Tom, I assumed his life, and it was, okay, so the lights were going to be on, uh, the bills were going to be paid, really great, and I had, like, a black card and a platinum card, and I had, like, three cars, and I still do. But... Um, <laughs> I had nothing to do other than to wait for my husband's phone call as to where I needed to be at dinner that night, what meeting he was going to, and then I just, you know, worked out and shopped. And I think that that's an easy place to become complacent yes. and sit there and just kind of fall back into life and not and not and live his life and celebrate his accomplishments and what he does, yet just kind of that's it. You know, what do you do? You, you, I, I'm at the BH Hotel. Big deal. You know, you, you, there's only so much shit you can buy. That's right. There's only so many trips you can go on. So there's true. only so much stuff. And I know when you're struggling, that sounds great. And it is. But it also has its limit to where you go, what am I doing? Like, what else is there? You right. know, is there anything else to do? Life becomes a little vapid. It kind of does. I know Luann said money can't buy you class. <laughs> You would say money can't buy you uh, life, you know, life within passion within, you know, it just can't, no. it can't give you, don't you wake up every day excited to it be you, and so grateful. Thank you. And when that, when you don't feel that you just kind of feel useless, you know, and just kind of like, well, and what I, am I going to do with all this? Right. And I think that there's an inspiration there for all. And I talk about it on my radio show all the time for us to, this is our life, the one life, if, unless you believe in reincarnation. Right, but, but this is the one life I remember. This is the one life I remember. <laughs> this is the one life I'm remembering. Like, live your dream and, and push go for it. And go for it. And don't let anybody dictate that. And hey, we give tons of stuff, tons of money to charity. We support lots of political candidates. It's not like we don't do that. But for me, people, you know, well, why don't you give back, baby? I got a 20-year history of giving a lot of fucking money. But that doesn't do anything. I mean, it does, but it doesn't inside the soul. It's absolutely you know, true. It's, you can do that. I can write you a check. I can, But how am I, you know, who am I? I realize, too, that the universe, the source, whatever you're going to call it, it doesn't it doesn't know time no so you have these dreams and even your vision board remember oprah was like do a vision board i still have mine yes and the crazy thing is i was like okay in a year i want all these things to happen i found my vision board it was stuffed away after 10 years had everything happened yes that's what i'm talking and about i thought it would happen in a year and it took 10 years that's universe, okay though and i look at you and go it's all on your own. It, it, it's okay. And that's why we can't give up as women. You know, you can't have someone tell you, oh, your time's up. So go sit down because you're not worth anything anymore. And you're not pretty anymore because that's, you know, what we're, you know, no, fuck you. No, <laughs> I'm in this fight and I'm going to go and I'm staying and you're not going to dictate to me what my hopes and dreams are. It's not going to happen. And I love the fact, and I think that's why a lot of people love you, is that you chose to follow your dreams at an age that most women probably would be ending theirs, and to fuck it, I'm doing it now. Well, yeah, I had grown up uh, in art school and performed all my life, and it was something that I really loved to do, and, and I wanted to do it again. And I wasn't going to let someone tell me, you know, at that time I was 35 and 46 now, uh, you know, you're too old, but babe, I'm doing it on my, I wasn't going to walk into some record company thinking I was going to get some deal. Bullshit. I'm doing it my own way. I love that. And I put one foot in front of the other. It was literally one foot in front of the other at my kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, with my friends that create. Right. And now I'm here with you. So, I, I love and it. it's been, let's see what it was, but it's, I think Erica Jane is 10 years old. So Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to be a rock star? Well, it's a good time, and it's great to be able to create and to entertain and to have a connection with an audience and to still do everything that you grew up doing. Do you think that Erica Jane, I know at one point she almost went away, and then you pivoted. I quit. I quit Erica Jane right before I pivoted. Will she keep going? I think she's here to stay. Yes. <laughs> I think she's here to stay, but you know what? Um, and then And then Erica Jane will you know, evolve again. Yeah. You know, it's just, I think we as people are always evolving. Um, I do want to talk about Tom a little bit more since I love him. So I want to go out to dinner. Please let's well, go you to know dinner. What? Why don't the four of us get together? I would love to. And, or the three of us. I mean, whatever you want to do. And yeah, let's do that. We're he not done yet. You. I just want to tell her I want to go out to dinner with Tom. <laughs> no, but I, you, yeah, whenever you want I to. I would love it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. A big fan I would of like, his. yeah, you would enjoy each other. I would. I, yes. I know this. I have I know you know this person. Yes, you would 
you guys would love each other, 100%. I know, and Donnie would too. But how was his health? Because his ankle, he broke his ankle in a car accident. He broke ankle. his ankle. He's fine. He had three pins. He healed up so well, he broke the pins. So he's good. He broke the pins? Yeah, the bones, you know, healed up. So he's kind of like, I don't know. This man's kind of indestructible. You know, he's 78, going to be 79. Still running the firm, and he's still out there and still doing it. Isn't that amazing? It's wonderful. Well, that's why I feel like you could never stop working. That because... is one feisty bastard. <laughs> I am married to one feisty this morning he was like I, I spoke to him before you know I came to work and he was like yeah I'm on the plane you know I'm on my way to Austin because he's got you know he's going to some lawyer thing I was like great baby he's like yeah I gotta go I'm at the end of the railway bye I was like <laughs> oh okay. you know so he's out there doing it and, and there was an episode where I remember you were, we were talking about his ankle and you were worried about him of course I was of course like any wife would because well, he that- wasn't walking right yeah and then you also said something um, you're like god I never really thought about like what ha- if it, what would happen to him like, would I be taking could I, care? Yes. Could I? I looked around the house and I thought, uh, if this shit falls on my shoulders, can I pull this off? Right. Like, this is a lot. Can you? Yes. The answer is yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I just don't know how. <laughs> I mean, I do. But yes, I can. I guess it's, the, I guess it's also is do you want to? Um, you for can. him, I would. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I was by myself, no. But for him, I would, sure. You know, I believe yeah. that. Yeah, I, I'd make that shit work in two seconds flat. I'd fucking, fucking figure that out. I mean, you've been together now for how long? Married for how long? Uh, married 18, together 19, and known him for 20. I mean, that says something. Huh? That's some dog years, right? What? He's I mean, got like get... ancient times in Los Angeles. <laughs> Does like he give you times. some advice for fighting with these bitches? Because yeah. I would want some, like, you know, cause some lawyer lawyers. tricks? Yes! Be sweet, Erica. Be sweet. I'm like, babe, that is not working. No. That is the worst advice ever. <laughs> but no, he's like, be sweet, baby. You know what? Listen and just, you know, be yourself. Be true. I think you also said, like, shut up and just listen and take it. Shut in. up and listen. And especially when it's your first year, you can kind of put your, pin yourself, paint yourself into a corner if you, you know, it's better just to listen at first and figure out all the backstory because you don't know it. Right. You, you think you see it. Well, you see it. When you're in it, it's a whole nother level of... Can't even imagine. Does anyone call you off the side? Like Lisa Run, I go, okay, listen, last year this is what happened, so just so you know... None no, no, but I am very close with Lisa Rinna, and I like her very much. I know you are as well. She's a good egg, and um, I'm happy to see her. You know, people get to see a di- the side that we know, yes. you know, which is completely different. I like her very much. Did you feel like you needed to kiss the ring when you first joined the show? No, I did not. Because <laughs> I think as a viewer, I think, don't you think Vanderpump, you have to go, hello, Lisa. <laughs> but I think if you do that, you paint yourself into a corner. Correct. And your ring was bigger. Yeah, well, you know what? My ring is my own. I mean, it, and what I mean by yes. that is that everyone has their own space. And I don't feel like anybody has an ownership of an ensemble cast. Ooh, that is a great tweet. <laughs> Baby, that's a read right yeah, there. That, that is, is a that shady is a ass. That is some shady shit. No one has ownership of an ensemble cast. You said this in the book, too. You have to be willing to look like an asshole. All embarrass day. yourself. All day. Because, and, and it it really is, I, I just did a comedy tour. I found a bunch of comedians because I didn't see there was any female comedy troops going sure. around. So I created one. I'm not a stand-up, but I produced one. And I went with these ladies, and I watched them get up night after night after night and go like, wow, it takes so much balls. Well, that female, listen, a female comic, that is like ridiculously tough. Tough. But tough. Even no matter what, it's it's tough in this business. But you had a moment in the book where you talk about where you fall. Oh, I've fallen on stage. My costume's broken open. I sing bad notes. I've been off. I've missed my cue. That is part of performing. You know, that is part of live show. And the happened. lights go out. Oh my God, the DJ blew up the shit. Like one of my first my first show back after being on the bench for ten years, we're in San Francisco performing at basically an, a swingers club. Mm-hmm. Let's be serious. And uh, Tom was there, Been collected there. my check like a manager, and the DJ tore up the entire sounds. And I just was like, you got to be fucking kidding me right now. Like this is not happening. And you know, so every. Everything like that happens. That's live. It, it is live. That's why I only really like to accept criticism from other artists and other people who put themselves in the light. And it doesn't, those are the people I listen to. Like if you came to me and you said, E, listen, da, 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 I would be like, okay. But for some random person who's just, you know, behind the keyboard, just, I'm like, 
you know what? You don't really know what you're looking at. Right. So constructive so criticism just enjoy from it. artists. Yeah. Constructive criticism for other artists. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. But just haters. Let's bring up haters because yeah. people don't realize when you get on the other side in show business. Um, I started, thank God, when single out, there wasn't the internet yet. Can you believe that? Can you imagine all the no shit internet. you would have gotten? I mean, imagine all the shit you would have gotten. I, A beautiful young was... girl, so gorgeous, playboy, <sighs> like just this whole thing. I mean, you would have. They would have really come for you. They would come for you, but I would have had a great lip gloss collection called Kelly. Kylie Jenny. <laughs> but, you know what, but, though? Good for her. But exactly. Good for her. The haters, though, is like whenever I see a new girl pop up, what we love to do is go, oh, look, someone new. Like first season, Erica. Remember, we're all like, yes, she's so different and strong. And love, love, love. And I knew you felt that love and support. Sure. And then... It we, turns. It turns no matter it what. It turns. It turns. No matter who you are. That's right. No matter who you are, you can only be beloved so long and you can only be out there for so long and speak your, especially if you're honest and you're convicted, then it starts to turn on you and you eventually, and you make mistakes. Yeah. And then the whole world sees it. So you That's can okay, imagine. That's okay though. Is it? Uh, yeah. You know why? Because I signed up for this shit. <laughs> I signed up for this. So I got to roll with the good and with the bad. How do you handle the one critique or the troll that you go, oof? Like sometimes I'll scroll and one will hit. Yeah, and some sometimes they'll hit a real nerve. Uh huh. Um, I think that I kind of look at it and I go, okay, why am I affected by this? Why is this particular comment kind of sticking in my gut? And then I just kind of move through that. I I can't give it that much attention. I really can't. It is good that you stop though and ask that question. I think that's an important question to ask. Why am Why I is this bothering me? Is there something that I'm not addressing in myself? Not like, is this person right? No, no. Listen again. Why am I allowing, what is it that I, am I not addressing something? Right. The, in, my, in my soul or in my gut? It, it, why does this you know strike what, a particular You chord? know what crazy activity I tried to do next with that? I um and I I try to tell people I'm like give it a, just try this hat on for once, when you see a troll or when you get a hater, I try to find one percent truth in it, and I sit in that for a minute. Yeah, and it is a whole different ball game, and I'm like, oh my god, it's because I would be like it's not true, and I name a billion freaking thing reasons why, and then well I, I look at the angle. Is this person, what is this person seeing? Am I not seeing something? Like, am I missing something? Right. And then some 99 times I go, no. Right. And then one time I go, hmm, uh -huh. hold on. Maybe. I could see why they would. I could see that. I could see that. So you're open to that. Yeah, I'm open to, <sighs> shit. I'm open to looking. I'm not open to buying into it. You, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like every now and then you go, I see that. You know what? Perhaps I didn't explain myself well or perhaps uh, whatever the case may be. Yeah. I, I call it like just trying that hat on for a minute or trying yeah, that Yeah, just hold on, on for a second. But I like, I do sometimes like to go to their profile and look at their miserable. Oh. But it's always, hey baby, let me tell you something. If you're going to like write some shit, take that shit off private. Let's go. Because <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm here. That and I, my, me, I'm here, so take that shit off private. Uh, Let's see what you're really working with and who you really ask are. A few more. Erica Jane, the book is called Pretty Mess. Before I let you go, um, let's talk. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Fun, Johnny. Go you don't gonna... understand. I, I really enjoy you, and I'm so happy. Thank you for braving the snow and for having Ditto. me, babe. Thanks. Ditto. I really no, appreciate I've been it. a fan since day You've one. You've been very so. kind to me, and I will always I remember you. that. I really, I really will. And now that I've read your book, I do feel like I do know you. You know me a little bit better. I was. I told my husband. It's so <laughs> funny because I kind of run things by Tom. I said, you know, babe, um, there's the book I wanted to write, and no one would talk to me ever again. Right. And I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about my family. Right. And then there's the book that I wrote, and then legal said, you can't say that. Right. Two sets of legal, right? Said, you can't say that. And then there's the book I wrote. Exactly. Yeah. And one day, a couple more people will exit, <laughs> and then I can, and then I can <laughs> lay it out. Exactly lay it out. Yeah. I'm like, I've already got titles for that one. Um, yeah, I'm ready. Um, <laughs> Dancing with the Stars wasn't yes. what you thought it would be. And, you know, I've been asked for years to go on that show, and my sister does the makeup on it, and I'm yeah, like, Jojo. 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 So how, what, why wasn't it what you expected? I think they kind of fulfill their slots they and they, they slot it. Mm -hmm. They slot it and you can't really move outside that box. I think they have their favorites. I think it's, I, yes, I agree. I think they have their favorites and I think that it is a different, my brand isn't quite appreciated. My kind of, 
in your face kind of like, you know, wasn't isn't appreciated there. So so basically when they would give criticism, were you going, no, I actually like that part didn't it, work for them. It was more I felt it was more personal than it was technical. Do you understand what I'm saying? Instead of saying it was a little bit more slighted toward uh, your raunchy. Wait a second. She just crawled all over him. They're not raunchy, but I'm raunchy. Mm -hmm. So the, it was not fair in that way. You know, why am I raunchy? But they just did the same thing and they're not. Good so, example. Yeah. And, and that, from the moment that that was said to me the first night, the bottom of my stomach fell out. And I thought, fuck, this is where I'm going. The, <gasps> the die had been cast. Fuck, that's it. I know where I'm going right now. And, and that, was, that was the hand that was dealt. And I really felt that. And I could feel it all the way through. You know. I mean, you've been in this business a long time. You can feel it. Totally. You can feel the noose. Yep. You can feel the pressure. Yep. And I thought, fuck, this is where they're going. Yeah. You even knew you, you packed your suitcase. You knew. I knew. I'm, I've been around. But you go back. I ain't no dummy. Would I go back? In fact, baby, yeah, I'd go back. Mm -hmm. But I'd go back in a way because I'd be like, all right, well, let's do this the right way. You know, I would, I would go back if, if the truth, it was, it was real. Uh, if, okay, if, if, if they played by the real rules. Yeah, the real rules. You know, the real rules. Fair. Don't slot it. Got the, it. There's not one set of rules for one woman who you deem aggressive and over-sexualized and not this girl over here. That's not the same. That's what, that's what you mean by slotting. Yeah, they slot. And, and you took it hard. I took it hard. You I cried. take everything hard. I take everything hard because I'm competitive ah. and I, I'm very competitive and I'm very passionate and I take everything hard. That's what, so when people call me the ice queen, they really don't understand. It's not. It's no, just no, no, no. very passionate and very competitive. Absolutely. Yeah. I think people yeah. that. Um... But that's how people <laughs> get things done. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know. What do you mean get things done? Well, I believe if you're passionate and you, you have a fire in your belly, you're motivated. Uh, uh, you're willing to push through things and, yeah. and get things going. Otherwise, you know, you make life happen as opposed to it happening to you. Got you it. Know. Well said. If reality TV is a trade-off, what have you gained and what have you had to give up? I've had to give up my uh, privacy a little bit. I've had to give up uh, being embarrassed. Um, what is that word I'm looking for where you are, you know, you're embarrassed all the time. <laughs> you feel like uh, a dum-dum. <laughs> um, humiliated? Yeah, my, I'm, uh, yeah. You have to be willing to be humiliated. But I'm sitting with Jenny McCarthy talking about <laughs> my book, which is really doing really well. Um, my music is out. I have gained a whole new fan base. And... Um, yeah, and it's worth it. It's worth it. It's a trade off, though. You got to be willing. It's like little battle scars. Yeah, and worth the battle scars. Yeah. Kind of like delivering my C section scar. There totally you go. worth it. Yes. What are the ingredients to a perfect housewife? Confidence. You got to be really confident. You got to be secure in who you are. You got to be willing to take some really hard knocks. I don't recommend it. You don't? I don't. Even with all the success that came with it? <sighs> I think if you are. Um, you really have to have a plan if that's what you want to do. You know, I think it's great for business. I think, but if you're thinking that you're just going to go on TV and have a good time, I have news for you. There's some repercussions. I have real news for you. Yeah. It's not what you think it is, but it is incredibly popular and has done incredibly great things for my life. And I'm grateful, but it is fucking hard. Well, you know what? You made us want to live vicariously through good. you. Good. And you know what? That makes me happy because I want to have a good time. Yeah. And I want to, I will, I want people to enjoy and to laugh and to have fun and to escape. Escape because it is fucking absurd. Because <laughs> it is. It's absurd. It's That's absurd. Right. You, you agree. Like, it's absurd. I mean, my God, could you imagine? Like, what are we doing? You know, like when you boil it down, like what the fuck are we doing? I mean, is there sometimes where you guys do do that and go, are you kidding what me? What the we fuck are we doing? I, it says in the book, we look at each other and die laughing at each other. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, what? What is going on? Do they cut some parts out where you're like, why are they well, the, well, they have to edit and make story. Sure. Right. Yeah. That must be the hard part, too. Well, can I give you an example? Yes. At the table with Teddy, she goes, you have pretend amnesia and you're a flip flopper. You didn't hear the word flip flopper, did you? No. There you go. Bastards. No, no, it's not. But perhaps that's why you see why I was a little bit more angry than what you saw. Uh, that's what I figured. I yeah, because they kept making a big deal about how aggressive you were. And I'm I went, not aggressive. Well, we're not seeing. If that's aggressive, 
I mean, that is a one no sentence in New York City. That is nothing on Atlanta. <laughs> that is, I mean, I don't know what coddled place we're talking about here. Right. And in business, like, that is zero. Right. Zero. But here, like, I'm aggressive. No, babe. No. 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 Maybe a little bit of a crybaby. She was just a little bit. That's yeah. See, I would make a good housewife. All right. You would be really good, but don't. You do it well. <laughs> I want to live vicariously you through you. You can live, yes. Through as a rock star, as a... <laughs> author thank you jenny thank you so much erica jane pretty mess you guys available right now i highly suggest it's an amazing book amazing person thank jenny you so thank much. you so so thank much you. from the bottom of my heart i really appreciate it thank and you. thank you thank you guys for showing up i really appreciate it thank you thanks you guys